Cool. So the question was, credit cards offer you a free loan for a limited period? I think this was more of a trick question, um, but most of you got it right. So the answer is true. Credit cards do offer a free loan for a limited period. And what that means is that usually these cards have a time period until which you have your credit. Um, so let's say a 30 day payment period where you can um, spend in a credit card and you need to pay back within those 30 days. Some cards would have a 15 or a 45 day period as well. If you pay the full amount back, then it is technically a free loan because you won't be charged interest on it. However, if you only end up paying the minimum amount due or maybe like say 50% of the amount um, that you had spent on your card over the pre previous month, then it won't be a free loan. You would have to pay interest on it. Cool, awesome. So that was a round of trivia. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Hena to tell us a little bit about credit scores. I know a lot of you have had questions around that. Okay, so uh, diving right in, it seems, uh, yeah, this this is a question um, we get quite often, right? What What is a credit score? Uh, in, and very simply put, it's, it's kind of like a report card for us as adults on how, uh, you know, credit worthy we are, right? So the major thing um, in the credit space is for lenders uh, essentially try to see uh, what, what is the likelihood that you're going to repay the loan, right? Because defaults um, cost lenders a lot, right? And so this is one indicator. It's actually one of the most important indicators uh, to a lender, this could be a credit card provider, this can be a home loan provider, your bank, you get, get a car loan, whoever it is, um, look at this number. Uh, it is a number between 300 and 900. Uh, essentially, I mean, the higher it is, the better, the more responsible borrower you're considered, which means you're more likely to uh, pay back the loan, pay it back on time. And because of that, you get more favorable terms. Right, so um, this is something that needs to be built, of course. Uh, we covered it in a quick trivia question a few minutes ago. Um, that yeah, it it if if you don't if you've never taken a loan or you don't have a credit card, etc., you don't have a credit score, right? So there just isn't data about you that a provider uh, may know whether to give you a loan or not. Which is why the term that's what the term new to credit means, right? Like it's the first time maybe right out of college or whatever it is, you may be looking um, to either get a credit card or get a loan, but you may get rejected uh, primarily because the provider doesn't know how good of a borrower um, you, know, you, you may be, right? Um, and in terms of um, how, do you, how do you check it, right? So actually, before we go into that, um, what goes into a credit score, right? Like how do you, well, A, how do you start building it? And then B, how do you make sure you're as high as possible? Now, anything above a 750 um, in India is considered to be like an excellent score, right? You're 750 and above, uh, lenders love you. Uh, you know, they know you're take, if you're taking on the loan, um, there's a very, very, very high probability of you paying it back so they don't have to chase you or deal with, you know, losses because, um, you know, you, you didn't repay your money. But what goes into it, right? So a lot of this is common sense, um, but um, essentially it depends on your behavior as a borrower uh, in the past, right? So, um, and uh, good question, Padmaja. We will uh, we will get to that. Padmaja's question is: Does having a loan reduce your credit score? So um, getting getting loans and paying them back in time um, is the way to build a score, right? Um, you're showing that yes, you're you're taking on something, but uh, you are good and diligent and can afford to pay it back as as per the terms, right? Um, other things that affect um, your credit score is. So let's say you have a line of credit, which is what typically credit cards come uh, come with. We talked about a credit limit. Uh, essentially, how much of that are you using, right? Uh, if let's say you have a credit limit of a lakh uh, per credit cycle, which is typically a month, uh, and you're using majority of it, uh, that actually tells um, lenders that you know you need a lot of. Um, you're taking on a lot of debt, right? So it's actually counterintuitive. It's almost like, hey, I have a lack of a limit. 
um, you know, I should be like maxing it out every month. Uh, but the actual utilization ratio that is recommended, which we did cover as well in a question, is about 30, 30 to 40 percent. Right. So which also then helps to keep increasing your limits. So your utilization stays in that ratio. Um, and if um, that's that's what's recommended. Now, there are many bureaus that um, have their own algos on calculating your scores. Right. And so we'll, we'll get to what those bureaus are. Obviously, what goes into what what details go into that algo we don't really know, but on a on a high level, these are things that matter, right? So your repayment uh, behavior, whether you pay back on time um, and the, the amount that's due. Uh, two is how much of your credit you're utilizing. Uh, three is um, you don't have um, too much debt, right? So having, so Padmada just kind of um, touches upon your question, does having a loan reduce your credit score? Actually, no. I mean, having a loan is what helps build your credit score, assuming you're you're paying that loan back um, on time, uh, but having too many loans can impact your credit score, right? It just means you're racking up on that debt. You may or may not be able to pay it back. Um, and that is not a good sign. So um, we don't know the answer to what is the ideal number of loans that we should, we should have, but um, a rule of thumb for any of us as, um, you know, if we have a, with, with, a, with a monthly income is um, there's something called a debt to income ratio or DTI. So for yourself, like make sure that DTI isn't, um, again, above that 30 to 40 percent. Right. So if you earn a lack a month, don't have more than like 30,000 bucks in EMI payments every month. Right. So that's a healthy debt to income ratio. If that keeps going up, it means your majority of your income is just going and paying back loans. Um, that data is available, you know, your income, et cetera, is available with these credit bureaus, and that could actually affect you um, negatively in terms of the score, right? Um, other things um, that you shouldn't do, um, and this is actually what happened to a friend of mine. Um, he was a guarantor for someone else's loan, uh, which people do do, right? So let's say a friend of yours doesn't have a great credit score, but needs a loan, and you're like, hey, I'll... Um, I will, uh, you know, put myself down as a guarantor. But what that means is if that person fails to pay back the loan uh, or defaults on it, you are on the hook and it affects your credit score as well. So just be careful about these things. Um, as a basically as a guarantor, you're, um, you know, you're on the hook um, in case that friend or that family member, whoever it is, uh, can't, uh, you know, pay back their loan, uh, but it does affect your credit history. So not too much debt. Uh, utilizing your your credit uh, limits not to the to the max. In fact, a li little under half of it. Yeah. Paying back, repaying your stuff on time, every time, full amounts, um, and uh, don't kind of sign something for someone else you may not uh, fully trust. Right? Uh, there's another thing that affects credit scores, which again, it's 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 advised to have a mix of loans. So um, y'all may know that you can either have unsecured loans, which are loans that aren't backed by, well, a security or a collateral, right? The example of this are personal loans or credit cards. And then there are secured loans, which are backed by collateral, right? So a home loan is a secured loan. A car loan is a secured loan. Um, these are backed by by your assets, uh, which um, so there's also, you know, folks folks say that you should have a mix of these loans. Um, I personally don't know how that affects your credit score, but this is something that, uh, you know, is is recommended in terms of both unsecured and secured. Uh, Niharka's question is, uh, but what if I want to pay back the loan faster? Can the DTI be more? Absolutely, right? Uh, actually, in any given month, just make sure your EMI payments are not more than let's say 30 to 35% of your monthly income, right? So um, yeah, if you wanna pay back a loan faster, just again, make sure there are no extra charges or anything to do that. But if you, know, you let's say you got a bonus at work and you're like, hey, I can pay back my, my car loan uh, faster than I could and the provider allows you to do that, go for it, right? But the DTI is more of a, more of a check for you individually, just to make sure you have that healthy, debt to to income uh, you know split um, and to anyone else at that given point in time if a lender is evaluating you and see like hey Neharika has a car loan and she's you know she has like 
like lacks in credit card debt and is applying for a home loan now, um, that's an issue, right? And her income is, is X. And so chances are she may not be able to pay back this new loan appropriately. So that could affect um, your eligibility. Any other questions on, on, on what a credit score is and what typically goes into determining that? Cool. So next question is obviously like, how can I check my credit score, right? Where is this report card uh, report card available? We talked about um, credit bureaus, right? So uh, there are um, a few of these um, uh, credit bureaus. Um, they, they are companies that, um, you know, get reported all this data. So let's say you get a loan from your bank. The bank is reporting your repayment history to these. You take a loan from, let's say, a BNPL provider. Um, your credit card provider, all of them are reporting um, your data to these um, to these bureaus who then have their individual algos. So you may actually see that your credit score differs a little bit across these because they just have different algos in terms of what goes into calculating your credit score. But um, these are these are bureaus that uh, that give or, or these, this is where your credit score is determined. In terms of how you check it, so. Um, there are different different ways of doing it. So each of these actually give you, um, Andrew Joel, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but they give you a free credit report um, every year. So you can log into, let's say, the Experian website. I think you'll have to put in your PAN or just some a few details and you can pull up your credit report. Um, or there are some fintech apps that actually allow you to do this um, as well. Uh, and the, the thing to note um, in terms of checking your credit score, so there are two kinds of pulls, right? Um, there's a soft pull and a hard pull. A soft pull is essentially you as, as the consumer is just checking in to see like, hey, what, you know, what, what does my credit report look like? What is my score? What's my credit history like? And, um, it, and that's it, right? You're not really taking it on for any specific reason. Uh, the hard pull is what lenders do. Right. So let's say you apply for um, a car loan, um, the car loan provider, let's say it's your bank, uh, does a hard pull on your credit report, uh, which means it's being pulled in with the intent of you taking on a loan. Um, and the more number of hard pulls there are that actually adversely affects your credit score. So that's also something to keep in mind. It's it's all aligned with like, oh, you're trying to take on too much debt. That's not a good sign for uh, for lenders as well, right? Um, and so what, what we'd recommend is check your score max one to two times a year. Um, it's not something you have to check monthly or daily or weekly. Um, and also look out for any errors. Like sometimes these, these histories, these reports may, there could be some error where you've actually paid something back in time or it may have some loan you haven't even taken on and that's adversely affecting your score because of, well, no fault of yours. Uh, but that is something you can also address, um, you know, the sooner you address it, the better. So it's, it's a good habit to just keep a tab on your credit score. It's not something you have to go crazy about, but just, just keep a tab on it, set a reminder, maybe annually to, to just see, um, to see what it is. Okay. So we have a couple of questions uh, from you guys. So how much time from Richard, how much time does it take to build back the credit score in years? Um, so this is a good question. Duration, um, duration matters. I don't know, Rajul, if you know the exact amount of time um, it, it may take, uh, but the longer you have a loan and the longer you're showing that good behavior in terms of paying it back, the better your credit score is. Um, Rajul, if you have any. Yeah, so I'll just um, tell a little, a little bit more. So it depends, right? So if you have just started, then it will take you... Um, more than a year to even get to like a good score but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing it just means that it's going to take a little bit longer for you to build a good score but you should get started um, as in when you uh, start getting start building uh, paying your money back and building that score out it doesn't take a lot of time to then you know maintain that score um, or to then build it out further once you're above let's say a 700 or a 750 that's a sweet spot to be at um, it might just take that initial time period if you're new to credit it might take a little bit more time for you I hope cool. that answers um, your question Rita. yeah 
Cool. cool. And I think God, I'm, sorry. Yeah, Rachel, go ahead. Go ahead. Now I'm just addressing um, other questions. Gauri asks, does diversification mean more number of credit cards or different categories like home loan, car loan? Um, it, it, could be, it could be a combination, uh, right, Gauri? Again, we don't have the exact number that, hey, you should have two credit cards, one home loan, one car loan, one education loan, uh, but a good mix of, of loans. Like if you have too much unsecured credit, which is let's say three or four or five credit cards, uh, that may not be a good thing if you have too many secure loans. So a healthy mix. Um, I don't think anyone really knows a specific answer on what what goes into that that mix, right? Um, and Vaishnavi asks if I'm a guarantor for my friend's loan and he or she is not able to repay it. Being character, yes, absolutely. So we did cover this, Vaishnavi. It does affect your credit score. Um, the idea of being a guarantor is that if that the the, the original borrower is not able to pay back her loan, uh, then you're on the hook. So either you pay it back for them, or um, and it does. Um, you know, if there are late payments, um, etc., it does affect you. That's the whole point of of having you um, sign that that paperwork, right? So. Um, that is, like I said, actually a friend of mine went through this and it took him about, I don't know, four or five years to actually rebuild it because that was a terrible like case of default. Uh, so this is something that we just should, should be mindful of. Okay, I'll take a second here and see if there are more questions. Just to add here, so um, just be mindful folks that Griff, Equifax, Experian, these are all credit bureaus. So um, they all have their own algorithms on how they determine what your score is, right? So if you check your score on Criff, it might just differ a little bit than what Experian might um, tell you what your score is, right? Because the algorithms differ. Um, it still is in like a range so usually you want to see it in ranges if it's above a 750 if Griff is saying your score is 750 and if experience saying it's 800 it, that's fine doesn't really matter because as long as it's above 750 that's a good score okay how do you build your credit score right um so yeah we did we did cover this um and uh for number one thing is you've taken a loan, you have EMI payments, um, or you have a credit card and you have your monthly bills, pay on time, every time in full, right? Like this is something um, that is that is the number one thing. Um, we talked about this minimum amount thing on a credit card, and that is so misleading. Um, if, if any of you have credit cards, especially from banks, you'll see minimum amount due is X. Um, that's typically the default um, that, you know, when you hit pay. But um, again, that may not affect your credit score because it's showing you're paying it back. But um, you are being charged interest on whatever balance you're not paying, right? So rule of thumb here is pay back on time, every time in full, uh, which means, yeah, like don't take on more, don't, don't take on more debt than what you can afford to, um, to, to pay back, right? Um, the 30% rule we talked about, this is your utilization rate. You have a one lakh of a credit limit a month. Don't spend more than 30,000 on that card. Uh, if you need to spend more, try asking for a larger limit, but keep this, this percentage, this ratio um, at all times. Uh, duration of credit, um, we did cover this as well. It's um, uh, the longer you have um, a history with a particular kind of loan, um, the better it is, right? So let's say you have a credit card that you applied for in, or you got in, let's say 2015, right? And uh, you just got a new credit card, prioritize using that older one more um, because the it just shows your history has been with that provider for a longer, longer period and you've shown good borrower um, behavior with them. Um, okay, so I think we're jumping gears into getting your first credit card. Uh, I think there's a question which credit score do financial institutes consider? How do we monitor the scores? So we did cover how we monitor the scores, but uh, which credit scores do institutes consider? Uh, Rojul, do you have the, the answer to this? Uh, so the credit score that a lot of financial and you know um, more traditional financial institutions consider is from um, this financial from the credit bureau called Sybil. 
um, but uh, you don't necessarily need to monitor your scores very regularly. Again, like Hannah mentioned, you know, just try to check it out maybe um, once in six months or once a year. Um, anyways, these credit bureaus only allow you to check it for free probably once a year. And if you're doing it through um, a fintech company or um, for a specific credit card that um, is checking your score to determine your eligibility for the card, then it will affect your score, right? So in terms of monitoring, just maybe check it like once in six months or once a year. Okay, and uh, Richa is asking when you're looking for credit cards, what are the must haves? Uh, just about to uh, to get into that, Richa. So it's a, it's a good segue. Um, anything um, else on scores? From I think any now there's one more question. Um, if I wanna switch from Gauri, if I wanna switch from one card to another, do I require to close down the previous one or is it okay if I just stop using it? Right. Um, sorry, Gauri, missed that. Uh, so you don't need to close down the previous one. Um, it can remain open. Just make sure you, you know, don't, there are no like annual fees or other random charges. You continue get to get charged for it. Um, and if, you know, just maintaining it, et cetera, becomes a hassle. Uh, obviously, if there's too many credit cards, I think more than three or four, um, then you may want to look at closing you know, or closing an account somewhere because that, that'll that just show you have, you know, you've applied for like a lot of different kinds of debt. So um, I've, I've done both. I've just stopped using a, a certain card, uh, then realized that, you know, I randomly got some charge by a bank and I was like, oh, it'll just be easier to close it because I'm not using it anyway and I have to keep, keep tracking it. But I had it open for at least a couple of years. That card was just lying in my wallet um, and I didn't really use it. Cool. So just jumping on to the next topic, which is getting a first credit card. So we know you all have a lot of questions around what to look at when you're getting a first card, right? So we're going to go into all of those things. Um, so again, you know, credit cards are curated, they're personalized, they're sort of designed for um, specific needs and for specific purposes as well. Um, so choosing a credit card is obviously like everything in personal finance really, really personal and depends on what is good for you, but there are a few thumb rules that you can look at, right, which we'll cover today. So first and foremost is your eligibility. Every card that you apply for will have um, specific parameters that they're looking at in order to um, see whether you as a credit card user are eligible for that card or not. Um, some of these parameters can be things like income, obviously your credit score is number one. So um, they'll check your credit score. If you are new to credit, if you don't have a credit score, then they'll check other things like, you know, your income, your PIN codes um, will also determine um, whether you're salary, whether you're self-employed, what your bank statements look like. Essentially what these um, credit card companies are trying to assess is whether you as a borrower will be able to pay back the um, amount that you have, um, that they're trying to loan you out with the credit card, right? So within, sorry, within that eligibility, it, um, your entire credit limit will also be determined. So depending on your score, depending on your income, um, the credit card company will determine whether you get a credit limit of say, one lakh rupees, two lakh, 10 lakh, maybe 20,000 to begin with if you're new to credit mm -hmm. as well, right? So that's number one. The second is rewards and cashback. So um, this is very, very personal to what um, you tend to spend more on. So for example, each card will have specific rewards um, that are curated for that card, right? So um, there are cards that are very travel specific. So if you're someone who likes to travel a lot, who travels internationally, um, then you might want to look for a card that has really, really good travel rewards, right? Like good foreign exchange rates on the card. Um, you have airport lounge access, you have rewards on ticket points, uh, your card points can cover, can cover your um, airline tickets as well. Things like that are curated within the rewards program for the card. If you feel like you're someone who will use the card mostly for, let's say, shopping online, then you might want to um, check out cards that have rewards specifically for online shopping as well, right? Um, so um, it, it depends on what you want to, um, where you intend to use the card most, and then choose a card, then choose a card that has curated rewards for that specific purpose as well. 
Um, for a beginner, you can also look at just overall general rewards as well. And a lot of these uh, credit card companies also do cashbacks, which is essentially, um, let's say, a 1.5% cashback. So if you spend um, a specific amount, you'll get 1.5% of that back um, in um, at the end of the month, um, which you can use to pay off your card or you can redeem to your account as well, which is fairly simple. Um, it's literally a monetary transaction that will um, occur on your account. Um, but uh, yeah, so we can go ahead. Yeah, sorry, just one quick point on the rewards and cashback as well. Typically, the value of rewards are higher than the cashback, right? Like while cashback may seem like many people prefer cashbacks because hey, it's like cash in my account. But if you're, um, again, to Rojo's point, let's say they're very specific rewards that you feel are useful, those can actually be of higher value than just getting the cash, right? So that's something something to think about. A lot of people honestly don't have time to like manage rewards, understand what rewards there are, what they can redeem. So most of us just kind of, you know, prefer, prefer the cash back, but that's something to think about. In fact, some of these cards which have, high annual fees again annual fees is another thing and I know we're just about getting to it but you could actually end up like making your money back on that annual fees and maybe even saving money after you know redeeming whatever rewards um they come they come with but Rujal I'll, I'll let you cover that yeah so um yeah that's our next point right so um the third thumb rule that you should look for is the interest rates and fees um, every card will have an interest rate associated with it. Just be mindful because interest rates for cards can go pretty high. So um, keeping in mind that you want to build your credit score out as well, always, always strive to pay um, your credit card in full um, at the end of your credit cycle. Don't pay the minimum amount back. If you do, then these interest rates won't matter, right? So just make sure you pay off your card in full um, at the end of your credit cycle. Um, and the next thing is fees. So um, all of your credit cards will have some sort of fees associated with it. There are a lot of cards that have no fees whatsoever. These are usually cards that are good for like beginners as well. So if you're um, just starting off in the credit card space, you can get a card that has no joining, no annual fees. Um, but a lot of these um, other cards that are more premium that um, have really, really good rewards and cashbacks, you may have heard of like American Express and um, some of these HDFC regalia cards that are, you know, that offer really good rewards, then those specific cards have um, steep annual and joining fees as well. But like Hannah mentioned, um, if you're someone who wants these created rewards, if you're eligible for these cards, then the reward value might actually help, might um, be enough to pay back the fee that you pay for these cards as well. Right. Um, and then finally, um, the fourth rule that you want to look at is getting an add-on card versus your own card. Um, so an add-on card is anything that um, is sort of a card that you get based on the credit history or an existing um, credit of, let's say, a family member. So let's say your uh, mom has an uh, has a card and you get an add-on card on her credit limit, on her credit score. Um, the uh, if you're just looking to start off, um, then a card, an add-on card is okay, but just be mindful that add-on cards don't actually help build your credit score. So um, it will not affect your credit history or credit limit in any way. So if you're looking to start off and build your score um, to actually get those rewards, to get the cash back, you want to get your own card. Then an add-on card is not good for you. Uh, sorry, one more quick point on the add-on bit. Um, you are sharing the limit, right? So if you are an add-on to someone who has uh, two lakhs of limit um, for a month, it's not like each of you have two lakhs, um, you know, in terms of your limit. So that's also something to keep in mind. Add-on cards, yeah, do not contribute to your credit score. So um, it's uh, pretty useless from that uh, from that standpoint. Um, Sorry, we have a couple of questions on add-on uh, from Richa. If I'm a recipient of an add-on card, can I build a credit history? We just answered that. The answer is no. The person who is the primary holder is the one building the credit history. So typically we see women specifically have add-on cards to spouses or dads. My first credit card was an add-on to my father's. Um, it was, yeah, we're sharing limits, but um, 
uh, he was on the hook to, you know, A, pay it back. And then his credit score was being um, affected, not mine. Um, Priya, hope, hopefully add-on card, uh, what we explained helps. Um, could you elaborate on it? It's, yeah, it's just primary account holder. You have a limit of, let's say, whatever, one or two lakhs. Uh, you can add a family member. Typically, it's a family member who um, is just someone else who's piggybacking off of your credit card in your face. They can swipe, you know, they, they have their own pin. They can use the credit card for purchases, but that's about it. The primary holder pays back the bills and builds the credit history uh, from, from that uh, add-on card. Uh, Niharika, is there a rule of thumb around how much annual fees is reasonable? Um, Rajul, do you want to take this? Yeah, so Niharka, there's no rule of thumb per se on like how much annual fees is reasonable. Um, if you don't have a car and you're just starting out, then, you know, we'd say you don't really need to pay the annual fee. There are a lot of good cards out there um, that have no joining or annual fees. So you should, you, you can look for those. But otherwise, if you're someone who's specifically looking for a card for a specific purpose, like I mentioned, let's say for travel rewards or for travel points, uh, let's say for online shopping, then um, assess whether those rewards that you're getting are good enough for the fees that you're also paying. Um, you don't want to pay like tens of thousands of rupees in fees. Some cards actually have that um, and then not end up using the card, not um, actually get the rewards that the card is offering, right? So uh, make that assessment for yourself in terms of um, whether the rewards are good for you or not for the fees that you're paying. Yeah, and a quick example here is I have a card that... Um, I do pay um, annual fees, I think about 10K, uh, but um, it gives me like airline tickets, right? And yes, during COVID, it was an absolute waste because I didn't wasn't able to redeem those rewards of the, the tickets. But then, um, yeah, my mother-in-law lives in a different city and I've been using those rewards to like, you know, book tickets for her, which then complete, in fact, I've saved more money by you know paying that fees and then redeeming rewards so it really depends on what you care about what's important to you and then do quick maths and see like okay is, am I going to break e at least break even on that annual fees and then you know be able to even save a little bit um, on top of that with with the rewards there's some school of thought that actually believes that you know there are folks who say just opt for the, the cards with fees because the rewards are so great and you you know, it's actually ends up saving you money. But again, it all ends up being what, what you're comfortable with. No annual fees, no joining fees, rewards may be less lucrative, but at least it's that, you know, you don't have to worry about money going out. Um, and they, they usually charge you, you know, automatically to your card, et cetera. So if you don't want to deal with that hassle, um, opt for cards with low or no, um, or no fees. Um, Priya, okay, Pooja is asking, can you give some good credit card names for a beginner? Uh, we, we'll get to that, Pooja. Um, travel credit cards, Niharika and Priya. I actually use um, this Axis Vistara card. Um, I bank with Axis Bank and so, um, you know, uh, got, got a good card through that. Um, so yeah, the limitation is it only gives me Vistara tickets. So if Vistara doesn't fly somewhere, um, you know, can't, can't really make use of it, uh, but um, yeah, the, the main use I make, my, my mom-in-law lives in Bombay and I live in Bangalore and she comes to visit. So that Bombay Bangalore sector works out well and we don't pay for or get a free upgrade and, and fun things like that. Um, cool. Uh, Padmaja, is it important to have a credit card from the bank you use? Uh, similar question from Niharika, can I get a credit card even if I don't bank with the same bank? Um, I can I can offer my two cents and Rojal, please feel free to add on. Um, so typically, uh, it's easier to get a credit card from the bank you bank with just because they know you, right? And in India, especially banking is such a relationship driven business uh, that, you know, you have a relationship manager, you know each other personally, you, you know, had, had a, let's say, a savings account with the bank, you have some FDs, they've seen you know, some, your monthly salary being credited to that, you know, wherever you have your salary account. And so they, they know you, right? And so it's typically easier to get, especially with your first credit card, it's easier to get it through the bank you've been banking with just because of that relationship. You can get a credit card, even if you don't bank with that bank, um, then they look at, you know, all of this other data about you, your credit scores, they'll ask you for pay slips, 
you know, just kind of evidence that um, you're you're a worthy borrower. So it's not impossible, um, but it it may be you know a little bit more tedious uh, to to do that. And uh, Priyanka, hi, uh, apart from access, what are the other travel reward credit cards that I should consider to choose from? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a, an expert on um, specific rewards. Uh, we can kind of look that up or you can post it in our um, community, uh, Priyanka, and we, we have a few like specific reward experts who can um, help answer that as well. Um, Rajul, if you have anything to add on to any of these. Um, yeah, I think Priyanka, there, there are some cards from HDFC um, Regalia that offer good travel rewards as also American Express cards, but you would want to also, you know, check these um, rewards and the eligibility out for yourself. So there are a lot of like good resources, good blogs out there that literally talk about their personal experience with a, with a specific card also, right? So um, it might be just like quick five minutes of research that you can do to understand whether, um, which travel cards are good and which ones um, might work out for you. Um, I think we missed one question up front, so I'm just gonna take that. So um, Trinivas is asking, you've been holding a ICICI card for the past six years and um, they're not increasing your credit limit, but there are other cards that are offering you five times the limit of your existing limit. So should you go for opting a new card by closing the existing card? Um, so I think uh, my answer to that would be you, if someone else is offering you um, a higher limit and that's a limit that you personally want, um, you definitely could opt for the other card. Um, just let your ICICI card be, if you don't use it, you're not going to you know, incur any specific fees for not using it as such, but just make sure that, you know, again, there are no other annual or um, other charges that, might, uh, that you might have to pay while you're not using the card. Um, and I would actually add on something here. Um, try to use that new limit to convince ICICI to give you that limit, right? Because they also don't want to lose you as customers. But if you're showing that, hey, someone else approved me for a higher limit, um, I'm going to take my business there. That could be a good negotiating tactic as well. Um, and just FYI, I did that recently. It worked really well for me um because because like we said right the duration of that relationship matters so since you've been with icici what did you said like six years um you probably and you've had a good history with them um you probably want to continue that and but if you want a new limit um get a card with another limit standard negotiation tactic right like you have a job offer from somewhere, you have a better salary somewhere else, but you want the other job, try to try to negotiate based on that. It may work. I'm not saying it, it will, but that could be an option um, to look at as well. Um, cool, Alicia. Uh, all right, few questions. Uh, Alicia asks, help with reliable sites and blogs for credit card reviews that will help selecting one. Um, I'm actually not, especially in India, I'm not aware of any good ones. I think a lot of sites try to push their own products. Even if you like try to Google something, um, you know, you may find content that is from a provider that's trying to push their own. I, I, I haven't found a trusted source. Um, basis is one place. If you, if you have questions around certain cards, um, things work views are or feed or guarantee either and i think we lost you uh back there for a minute oh sorry um yeah my internet went off for a little bit can you hear me now yeah Okay. Yes. No, I was just saying um, I haven't found any like very unbiased um, portal or a site or a blog that that offers, um, you know, the, these reviews. But uh, you can what, what my suggestion was, um, you know, if you have questions around certain cards, come on basis, we have we have a community folks would could either kind of chime in with their own experience or um, if they you know, are experts on, on particular cards or reward programs or reviews. Um, Rajul, I'm not sure if you have. Uh... Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Just uh, Alisha, put your question on the basis community. Um, 
I'm sure there will be lots of folks who will be able to chime in on um, which uh, on credit cards that they've used and which ones they personally like. Cool. Niharika is asking, what is the process to redeem reward points? Um, Niharika, it's typically on your credit card app or your banking, like your net banking, uh, depends on where you have your card. You should see, you know, an option. You can see how many points you've accumulated. There should, it should typically be easy. I know a lot of banks, um, the experience is hard. I've, yeah, I've had my share of like very, I, I had points. I just didn't know how to redeem it, but typically it should be a very easy, like redeem points, um, if it depends on the card, if there's a cashback option or they, they can show certain kinds of rewards you can get, it should all be within the app or the website. So that's how, how you do it. You will have to kind of stay on top of your reward points, right? In some cases, they also expire, um, you know, things like that. So just make sure you're on top of um, on top of how many points you have, what, what they can be redeemed towards, and then the actual redemption process. Um, ideally, good providers make it make it fairly simple, right? It doesn't. It's not painful to actually get get your rewards uh, from from that. Um, Priyanka is asking, talking about the basis power card. Absolutely, we're getting to it in just um, a slide or two. Awesome, loving loving all the questions, everyone. So feel free to to keep them coming. Um, okay, I think the last couple of things before we we get into Q and A. Uh, Roger, yeah, so really the last thing that we want to talk about is where should you use your card, right? So, um, I mean, I won't repeat the whole um, point around rewards and using your points for um, the rewards that you're also getting, using your card for the rewards you're also getting, but um, try to use your card for your daily expenses as well, right? Like even for like your shorter term expenses, um, anything like your fuel for groceries, um, literally your day-to-day -day expenses. Um, try not to use the card for bigger expenses where a loan might be better. So something like a, a deposit for a house or um, anything that goes into more than like lakhs of rupees, you probably don't want to use your card for that uh, specific purpose. A loan might be better there. Um, just because if you have an issue in repaying um, that specific amount, then credit card interest rates are very, very steep and your um, personal loan or that's for the loan that you can get for a specific purpose, um, you might be able to get a better interest rate there. So a credit card is great to build a credit score on day-to-day -day expenses that you're doing. Yeah, um, to Padmaja's point, I use my card everywhere too, uh, but yes, being mindful of limits, don't overshoot that utilization ratio just um, yeah be be mindful of of those things some cards yeah offer like on fuel you get certain like you know the, the surcharge is waived and things like that so just see what what benefits your card offers and where it makes sense always to use it um etc the obviously the rule of thumb is don't use it just to rack up on debt right like there's so many of these stories where um, which is why credit cards seem tend to have a bad reputation sometimes. It's just like, oh, it's it makes you overspend and you're living beyond your means. Like, don't get into that. That's a very slippery slope. Um, don't, um, don't bite more than you can chew, uh, but use it to build your credit score, get benefits from rewards, things like that, right? Like that should be, that should be the goal. Um, uh, Sidra, we're getting to the basis card in literally just a minute. Um, Rajul Padmaja is also asking some light on choosing EMIs for higher amounts. Uh, Padmaja, could you elaborate? I don't uh, completely understand your question. Um, so if you're making like a bigger purchase, say like for 25,000 or something, and your credit card allows you to choose an EMI option, right? You can choose to repay back in three months or six months. So is it a good option to do that? Um, or, and generally, I'm just curious to know that. Yeah. So I think Palmeter would also depend on the interest rate that the card is charging, right? So if um, it's usually credit cards have higher interest rates and if they're bigger amounts, um, then you just want to check what that payment term also looks like for that EMI. Um, usually my personal rule of thumb is to not use credit cards for, um, you know, uh, for these EMIs or even for um, 
anything that like I, I can pay off in the next three months or something like that, I would rather just go for a separate option altogether just because of the interest rates and all the fees that are associated with a card. But if, if the terms are very clear to you and it's something that you are comfortable with, then you could um, then use uh, the card for maybe a three month EMI period or something like that. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks. Cool. A uh, couple of more questions and then we'll get into the basis power card. Priyanka is asking, um, are there negative impacts of using the card for minor spends? Um, absolutely not, Priyanka. The only thing is some merchants don't like it um, because they have to pay a fee, right? So um, let's say you're buying something for 100 rupees. Um, the merchant pays, um, I mean, loses, let's say, anywhere between 1% to 2% of that, um, of that transaction, right? So that, that small merchant or small business or whatever it is don't like credit cards for those small, small ticket sizes. Um, good businesses always accept credit cards. Um, I mean, if, if, you're, if, if you're running a good business, you because it, it just gives people an easier way to buy, right? So um, that would be the only thing to be mindful of. Sometimes they pass, and this is becoming less, but I've seen that some businesses pass on that fee to you, saying like, hey, you're buying something for a hundred bucks, you, you want to pay on credit card, I'm going to charge you like 105 or something, right? So that could be the only downside, um, but otherwise, absolutely not. Um, I've used my credit card for like 20 rupee purchases and things like that. So there's no negative impact to you per se as the credit card holder. Um, okay, so a couple of more questions. Aishwarya is asking if I already have a credit card with my bank and would like to move to a different card within the same bank to maximize rewards, would you suggest this? And would this affect my credit score? Mm, I actually don't know the answer to this. Rajul, any, any uh, It So if you're trying to get a new card within the same bank, it particularly like shouldn't affect your credit score, right? Because you're just getting a new card then. Um, you just maybe want to check with the bank itself whether closing down your earlier card will affect your score or not. Um, if it doesn't, if it does, then you might just, you know, want to keep that card and not use it. Um, if it uh, doesn't, then you can close down the card and just move to, um, I guess you said, intermise, yeah. Uh, but just ask the bank, I would say, if they're doing another hard pull, right? If they're doing another hard pull on your credit report, then that's effectively, um, you know, applying for a new loan or a new credit card. So I would I would clarify that. Um, if, if they're not, then, um, you know, it doesn't, it may not affect um, your credit score. Um, okay, Kirti is asking how much of an impact is a credit card for an educational loan that I will be taking in a few years. Also, I don't own. Um, sorry, Kirti, I'm not following that. Own, is it wise that I get one for that reason? Um, okay, I'll try to answer this. Let me know if um, it 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 answers your question. Uh, it will help, right? Uh, with um, you know, a good credit score helps for any kind of loans now or in the future. Um, my, again, I have a personal experience with an educational loan um, where I was actually asked to put, put down collateral, even though I had a good credit score, but that's probably because I was trying to take on a pretty large amount. But um, having that credit card, building your credit score um, will, will be useful either way, right? So uh, take start building it now and it'll help uh, uh, going forward. Um, even if there are collateral requirements, it may just lower it right because you're proving out your worthiness as a borrower uh with with that with that credit score and then yeah so that would be the answer hopefully that that answers your question um Kusena is asking will the credit score have any impact even if we opt for no interest emis um i don't believe so um I, there may be just check for additional hidden fees and all of that but in terms of your credit score um it shouldn't um it shouldn't affect that assuming you're paying back those emis uh, on time um puja is asking <clears throat> i've heard that the first credit card should be of the bank that you have your salary account with is that true not necessarily puja people opt for that because it may be the easiest way to get that first credit card since your bank knows you has your income history all of that but um, 
the age we're in now, there's um, there's so many options out there. So you pick what works for you. Um, it's typically easier to be be eligible with the bank you have a relationship with already. Okay, Shanti is asking as a fresher, how can I increase my credit score? Um, Shanti, we did cover this earlier, uh, but just very quickly to reiterate, um, get a credit card, uh, get a credit card. That's the fastest way to, um, you know, get into this whole system, this whole credit system. Um, you may, um, you you do need some kind of income to, to be eligible. That's the only way a credit card provider will know that you're able to repay, um, you know, your credit card bills every month. Um, so start doing that, even if it's with a really small limit, you know, 20K, 25K, whatever it is, start doing that, start spending on it, paying it back, um, that's what will help build um, your score initially. And uh, yes, and Rajul, good point. Uh, we've covered all of this on the Basis app through, through our boosters. And if you have questions, like more specific questions, um, our community is always there to, to help and answer. I'm sure there are many people in, the, in this boat. So, okay, um, I think we'll, um, how are we doing on time? We're, yeah, we're good. Uh, so yeah, I think, uh, all of you uh, may have seen this. Um, if not, uh, where we are looking to um, to launch, we've announced the launch of uh, the Basis Power Card. Uh, this is uh, it's literally India's first um, credit card that's designed for women. Uh, what's different about it, right? Like, why does this need to exist? Why is it so exciting for well, all of us here on this call? Um, is that so we've talked about interest rates on cards, right? Um, credit cards have historically, and this is a global thing, it is the most expensive form of a personal loan that you can get. Um, your interest rates can be anywhere between 35 to 45% a year, which is ridiculously high. So if you're, you know, if you do need the credit card to finance certain purchases and you know, you are keeping a small balance on it or whatever, it can easily spiral, skyrocket into something very unaffordable. Um, anyway, my point of bringing that up is that a lot of this data around, um, you know, how, how credit card users uh, behave is, um, is skewed towards men, right? So um, if you look at the stats today in the country, two years ago, women represented about 8% of credit card holders in India. That has increased to about 12% in the last year or so. It's still really small, right? So 88 to 90 percent of credit cards in our country are owned by men uh, and which means all the data that's going on behind the scenes in terms of determining risk and interest rates and all of that is based on how men um, you know use credit cards and their repayment behavior etc right so we are building um, a, a card that's driven off of women-centric data uh, as we all know um, women tend to be more responsible borrowers uh, right, we're more dependable and all of that, and um, we we shouldn't we shouldn't succumb. We shouldn't be, um, you know, uh, tied to some data that or or some rates that were determined based on data of of people that aren't like us. Bottom line is better interest rates on this card based on how women are, you know, borrow and pay back uh, pay back loans. Rewards, right? We talked so much about rewards. They're exciting. Um, they can be um, highly lucrative for all of us. Uh, and all rewards uh, programs, at least in, in India so far, um, have been designed uh, based on what men like, right? So uh, very common rewards are around, you know, and not to say that women don't fuel, fuel up their cars, etc. but they're very generic, right? We, we tend to spend on maybe different things. Um, you know, if, if y'all have heard of the pink tax where personal care products for women um, actually cost more than, you know, the exact same thing, just packaged differently for a man. So these are areas we want to focus on where uh, we're essentially looking at A, what women uh, prefer to spend on and B, uh, what are ways we can structure reward programs that, that are actually designed uh, for what women may actually need and want and, and actually benefits them. Uh, and so these are some benefits of this, which is where the, the credit card for women um, comes through. Obviously this card will help all of us continue to build our credit history. There are so many cases we see where, yeah, women tend to maybe take on add-on cards 
or maybe averse to credit cards for whatever reason. I think um, someone on on uh, this call itself said like, hey, I've, you know, I've been using a debit card. It just feels safer and hassle free. And I'm, you know, not spending more than I actually have in my bank account. So that that's that's quite like normal, right? Like we've, we, we do tend to more so than men. I'm not saying all men have credit cards or anything, but uh, when it comes to actually getting a loan later, we realize, hey, we, we didn't, you know, maybe the awareness was lacking, maybe, you know, not proper education or information or whatever it was, or just not the right card that was designed for us. Um, that was there. And then, you know, it may be too late to start building a credit history then, right? So that's another thing, building credit scores, rewards that actually make sense for women, um, interest rates, um, you know, payback, all of that um, designed for actually how women, women behavior um, is, is actually um, what, 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 what that actually is. So these are some benefits. Um, hopefully everyone here has signed up for our waitlist. Uh, and Rajul's just shared the link. Um, if you haven't do so um, already, uh, we are going to launch this soon and it is going to be a limited launch. So um, get on our waitlist. Um, it's it's going to be revolutionary. We're so excited even as we were designing this and coming up with, you know, the, the entire product. Um, it's been, um, it's just been really, really exciting. So hopefully you share that excitement with us and we change that 12% or whatever that number is now to something closer to, to 50% or more, right? Um, so that's, um, that's, what, that's what we're launching. We, we want to continue holding these sessions to make us all, um, you know, better um, equipped, uh, better informed about um, these financial products, um, credit card specifically, we're calling it the power hour, um, and we'll kind of dive deeper into all aspects of like building credit, um, you know, how to use credit effectively, all of that fun stuff. So uh, more on this coming up, uh, but happy to um, take any last questions as we wrap. No questions? It can be, I mean, not just on the power card, anything we also cover today or something that's been on your mind. Yeah, uh, Hannah, can we, can we just go back to the slide on things to look for when choosing a card? I think I missed the fourth point there. Okay, yeah, thank you. Cool. Uh, Priya is asking, do we need an invite code for the power card? Um, you don't need one to sign up right now, Priya, but um, if you have a friend who's signed up, um, use her invite code. Um, it'll get both of you um, further up our priority list, uh, right? So, um, and if once you sign up, share your code with, um, with, with other women, friends, family members, colleagues, um, and let's get this into the hands of, of more women. Uh, Priyanka is asking, what are the benefits you're offering on the power card? Uh, Priyanka, like we said, they are customized rewards for women apart from better interest rates um, as well. So um, not divulging the very specific points right now, but you can be rest assured that this is going to make sense. Um, well, more sense than what, what exists in the market today, at least. Um, Richa, I'm currently unemployed and in between interviews, can I still join the wait list? Um, Richa, you can submit your... Um, uh, you can sign up. Uh, we are looking, I mean, at least initially for um, women who do have an active income. Obviously, if this changes, uh, just drop us a note uh, once you, um, you know, you do start getting your income again, um, and we can we can update that info. But either way, sign up so we have you um, on the list as well. Cool, any more questions? We'll, we'll also hang out for another five, seven minutes or so. Um, but hope hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you learned something, something new. Um, do um, spread the word. A lot of this info uh, is, um, is not available as freely for a reason, right? Um, financial product services, uh, you know, folks make money based on just lack of informed customers. So we wanna also change that. Um, 
if there are other topics you want to do a deep dive into, um, drop us a note. Um, our basis community is there, obviously. You can also just write to us. Um, if you're not on basis A, on the basis app already, get on that, get on our power card waitlist and submit really anything you, you'd like to take a deeper dive on. Anything under the personal finance umbrella, we will cover. Priya, can you do a session on term policies? Absolutely, we can. Um, thank you, Srinivas. Thank you, Gauri. Good. So um, thanks, Hussaina, for joining. And please, please help us spread the word. Um, the, more, the more women who are taking charge of their money, the better it is for, well, everyone. Awesome. Okay, we'll hang out for another five minutes or so if anyone has Can questions. We want to play the video. Yeah. Cool. Um, that, yeah. Okay. Just one second, I'm pulling it up. Yes. Less than 33%. It's time. Time to evolve. Time to progress. Time to innovate. In a new financial ecosystem, we're working towards leveling the playing field for women. A powerful product for a powerful view. Get on our wait list today. Your money, your way. Awesome. Cool. So I think that brings us to the end. Um, thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend ahead and stay tuned for more of these.